Today's movie is strange, unique, and bittersweet as it explores human feelings and desires. It dives deep into the realm of emotions and paints a beautiful mural of them. The movie begins with our main protagonist, Alethea Benny, a narratologist who is on her way to Istanbul for a large meeting with her colleagues. After she lands, a man approaches her and offers to show her all the mysteries of Istanbul. Alethea refuses and then meets with Professor Gunham and other colleagues. On their way to a hotel, narratologists discuss stories about the djinns, morally gray spirits that grant wishes. Later, Alethea and Gunham hold a lecture in which they talk about ancient beings, gods, and other entities, and how humans use them in stories to explain all kinds of things for which they didn't have an answer. Suddenly, Alethea sees a weird man in the audience. He looks like he is coming from another time, and only Alethea can see him. She tries to ignore him, thinking it's just a hallucination. But as she looks again, hoping he won't be there, she sees him again. He attacks her, and she falls unconscious. After that little incident, Alethea assures Dunham that she is better now, and they venture into Istanbul's bazaar to buy a souvenir. There, Alethea finds an antique bottle. The shopkeeper tells her that it's called Nightmare's Eye and that it was around 200 years old. Gunham tells her to buy something else because the bottle is dirty and doesn't look too good. However, Alethea loves the bottle, and she buys it. She goes to her room, and after taking a shower, she takes the bottle to clean it. She rubs it with her electric toothbrush, and suddenly a giant djinn comes out of it. Alethea first thinks it's just another hallucination, but then realizes that the djinn is real. The djinn starts speaking in an ancient language, but as he sees that Alethea can't understand him, he starts switching languages until he hits ancient Greek, which Aletha can understand. The Dejen starts touching books in the TV, and that way he learns English in an instant. The Dejen offers to grant Alethea three wishes, so long as each one is truly her heart's desire. But Alethea argues that wishing is a mistake, accusing the Dejen of being a trickster. In response, the Dejen pulls out some food and tea and decides to tell her the three tales of his past and how he ended up trapped in the bottle. He was in love with his cousin Shiba. One day, King Solomon arrived to marry her. He tried to impress Shiba with his magic instrument and playing. Shiba was blown away, but still uncertain. So she gave him an almost impossible task to find magic silk and find out her mother's name. However, Solomon completed it and Shiba decided to marry him. Solomon sensed the Dejen, and he captured him in a bottle and ordered his eagle to throw the bottle into the sea where he spent 2,500 years floating around. Back in the present, Alithia asks the Dejen what he did for those 2,500 years. He explains to her that he was consumed by rage at first. Then he prayed to the gods for salvation and then, when none of them replied, he returned to rage, and then again to pray. He was trapped in the circle. The Dejen asks Alethea if she's married, and she tells him that she is not, but mentions a failed marriage in her past. Everything went downhill when she lost her child, and then the love began to fade. Her husband left her for another woman, and Alethea coped by reading books and researching ancient stories. The Dejen then tells her a story of his second imprisonment. The bottle in which he was trapped ended up in the wall of the Sultan's palace, and one day a girl named Golten, a concubine in the palace of Suleiman the Magnificent, found it while she was spying on the Sultan's son, Mustafa. Golten's first wish was for Mustafa to fall in love with her. Then she wished to bear his child, but the Dejen warned her that it could be dangerous because Sultan's second wife, Hurum, was planning to erase Mustafa, and Gulten would put herself in danger. Gulten didn't listen to him, and he granted her wish. Then she showed everyone proudly that she was pregnant. 
Soon, Mustafa was killed by his father, and she was thrown off the palace's walls. The Dijin then wandered the palace for over 100 years, invisible due to the concealment of the bottle. One day, he almost captured the attention of a young Murad IV. But soon, he became sultan, and the Dijin was unable to get his attention again. Murad IV then went to war, from which he became vicious and ruthless, and he ruled mercilessly until he died of alcoholism. His brother Ibrahim became the new sultan. He had a fetish for obese concubines, and his favorite among them, Sugarlump, uncovered the bottle, whereupon the Dijin appeared to her and desperately begged her to make a wish. Sugarlump thought that he was just a trickster and wished for the Dijin to be re-imprisoned in his bottle at the bottom of the Bosporus. The Dijin finishes his second story and asks Salitha to make a wish. However, she is still uncertain if it's a good thing to do and thinks he's a trickster. The Dijin tries to persuade her to make a wish from her heart, but she refuses and jokingly says that she wishes the two of them had never met. That angers the Dijin, whose powers smash the bottle in which he was imprisoned. Alethea, aware she has made a mistake, sits on the bed and tells the Dijin to tell her a story of his third and last imprisonment. Zephyr was the third wife of a Turkish merchant. His other two wives, and everyone else in his service, despised Saphir, and the poor girl was consumed by anger. She was just the merchant's plaything, which he used to fulfill his desires. One day, the merchant's servant found a gin's bottle in the stomach of a fish. The merchant gifted that bottle to Saphir. She released the Dijin and showed him her inventions. He was stunned when he saw all the things that Saphir made and how smart she was. She was also beautiful and Dijin fell in love with her. The first thing that Saphir wished for was more knowledge and Dijin granted that wish in the form of literature. Every day she became more and more intelligent. Her second wish was to dream like Dijin's do and when Dijin granted her that wish she perceived the world in a different and higher way. That fed her knowledge, and she became wiser. Soon, Saphir became pregnant with the Dijin, and despite his growing affection for her, Saphir felt increasingly haunted by his presence and her newfound knowledge. The Dijin offered to reside in his bottle whenever she wanted, but during a fight, Saphir wished to forget that she had ever met the Dijin. That left him imprisoned and unknown once again. Dijin's final story moves Alethea to the point that she wishes for them to fall in love, resulting in them having sex. Afterwards, the Dijin and Alethea decide to travel back to London together. At the airport, Alethea has placed the Dijin inside a salt shaker bottle and placed the bottle without the cap in one pocket and the cap in her other pocket, which sets off the alarm when she goes through airport security. An airport security officer investigates the salt shaker by placing a pencil inside and then places the cap back on the bottle. He sends it through the x-ray machine despite Alethea's pleas. After they arrive, Alethea goes to unpack her things and when she returns, she finds the Dijin in her backyard. He is confused and overwhelmed due to the effects the city's cell tower and satellite transmissions have interacting with his electromagnetic physiology. He also hears the voices of many people, and when he shows that to Aletha, she understands how hard it is for him. For those 200 years he spent in the bottle, the world evolved fast, and the Dijin explains to Alithia that he will need some time to adjust. Suddenly, Alithia's two neighbors show up, and they immediately start making unpleasant comments about how she'd rather research the stories of foreign nations than her own. They add quite rude and racist comments about their superiority, which angers Alethea, and she flees to her house. She feels angry and overwhelmed, but the Dijin is there for her, and he eases her mind with his magic. Alethea falls more in love with him. The only thought in her mind during a whole day of work was to come home and see him again. After she arrives and spends some time with her lover, Dijin, 
she decides to bring De Jin's magic food to her racist neighbors. When they accept her offer and try the food, they completely change for the better. Suddenly, the De Jin appears, and when she finds out that her neighbors can see him, she introduces him as her friend from Istanbul. A few days pass, and the De Jin partly adjusts to today's world. Soon, he begins to listen to Aletha's lectures and explore the new world and its wonders. One day, Alethea comes back home from work and sees that her house is filled with sparkly particles and that there is no trace of the Dijin. She starts looking for him everywhere, and she finds him in the basement, withering away. Then she uses her second wish to get the severely ill Dijin to speak again, apologizes for using her wish to deny them the chance to fall in love naturally, and uses her third and final wish to set the Dijin free so he can return to the realm of Dijin. Alithia spends the last night with the Dijin, sleeping in his arms. The next day she wakes up, packs all of his things in a box, and places it in the basement. Three years later, we can see Alithia sitting on the bench in a park, writing the final words for her book's draft, inspired by her encounter with the Dijin and his stories. She gets up and heads back to her house, where she suddenly sees the Dijin walking toward her. The movie ends as they walk away. Alethea begins narrating and tells us that he visits her from time to time and promised to do that throughout her lifetime. If you enjoyed this movie recap, make sure to hit the like button. And if you want to see more of these, subscribe to the channel and check out our other videos.